Today we are doing our dream session three, and this one is about Jacob. This is Jacob's first dream, and this can be found in Genesis 28. Before we go over the dream, um, I'm going to give some context to J what's going on in Jacob's life at this point, because it's so important when you're doing dream interpretation to understand, just like biblical study, you, sh you should understand the context to what the message, what the dream is being given and why it's important at that specific time in the individual's life. So for Jacob, he had just stolen the birthright. He had just tricked, he had just been told by his mother, Rebecca, to steal the birthright, to trick Esau into giving it to him and then to trick Isaac into releasing the blessing and the birthright to him. And so uh, even though Jacob is given the, the title of, of a trickster and a liar, Though he does those things, there is a deeper issue that I believe the Lord wanted to address, and that's what part, a huge part of why he gave the dream. Um, but this, if you read chapter 27, Genesis chapter 27, you'll find the story of him taking the birthright uh, as a tricking and lying and getting the birthright for himself. But then he is fleeing for his life. This is when the dream comes to him. He's fleeing for, for his life because Esau, his brother, says, once dad passes, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take you out. And that's his plan. So uh, Rebecca tells Jacob, flee, go to your uncle Laban and find a wife that is not an idol worshiping Canaanite. So Esau had decided to marry a bunch of women that were didn't worship Yahweh and worshiped idols. And he brought so much pain and uh, bitterness into the family because he married all these idol worshiping women. So Jacob is obedient to go to his uncle and find a truly uh, a, a, a wife that would be honorable and that would not lead him into idol worship. So he is he is on his way to obedience. And that's where we find Jacob when he receives the dream. But he still needs to be matured in his obedience, much like Joseph. When Joseph receives the dream, he has maturing to do in his obedience, even though his heart, I believe Joseph's heart was right, but he had a lot of maturing to do um, in his willingness to obey. So Jacob is part of a generational line. And this is the, the issue that the Lord highlighted to me that's actually more of the issue that the Lord needed to address than him being a trickster and a liar this this generational line there is a a problem of of these men abraham isaac jacob fearing the authority and position of men more than they fear the one true god that more than they fear god they're fearing men and we see this when abraham twice lies to a leader in the land an authority in the land out of fear of them um, and almost gets him, you know, has his wife taken away from him. So he fears men more than God. And Isaac, this is no joke, in Genesis 26, Isaac goes through the same exact situation with King Abimelech. He goes through the land and Abimelech wants to take Rebekah because she's so beautiful. And he lies and says, she is my sister. He does the same exact thing as his father. And so we see this idea, this understanding of generational strongholds, generational sins being passed down is very clear, even when you look back all the way back to Abraham and Isaac. Um, but with Jacob, he his lie to appease or out of fear of man is to appease his mother. And he lies to Isaac. He tricks Esau. But this in Genesis 27, this pattern of fearing man more than fearing God is what God, I believe, gives him the dream to get to the heart of. He, want, he wants Jacob to know who he is, how, what his destiny is, and why he should only fear God and not men, and why he should put his trust in God. And that's the context that we find Jacob in. He's lying down on his journey to fleeing for his life to go find a good wife, and this is where the Lord meets him. He is out in the open, and I'm going to read this dream to you guys. Um, and this can be found in Genesis 28. I'm going to read verses 10 to 17. It says, Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking none of the stones of the place, I'm sorry, taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. 
and he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring, wherever you go, I'm sorry, in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So we're going to stop there. And um, in response to this, he takes the stone that he had laid his head upon and make, uses it to make a pillar a memorial or a stone of remembrance to this situation, this encounter that he had with God. And he calls it Bethel, the place of meeting God. Uh, and so he honors the presence of God in that place. And that is his response. That is his response to the dream and the message that God gave him. Now, he could have done anything he wanted with that dream, but he chose the, a correct response to the dream. And... Um, he wanted to make the Lord his God. If you study the rest of the chapter, he says uh, the Lord, he, call, he says that the Lord is his God, not just the God of his father. And I believe that is the lesson that the Lord wanted to teach him through this dream encounter. He wanted Jacob to know him personally as Yahweh for himself, as the one true God personally. And that is often why the Lord will give an encounter like this to a person in a dream. Encountering someone in a dream makes God personal to them. And I've heard story after story of people who, because of a dream, gave their life to Christ. And um, this Jacob needed to know the Lord personally and not just hear about him from, from Isaac and from the stories of Abraham. And so that's what the Lord gave him through this dream, so that he would fear the Lord as his God and not fear man and not do everything based off of the fear of man. And so I believe that was the key, not just the, the him being a trickster and a liar were, um, were the fruit of this deeper root of not of fearing God, of fearing man more than fearing God. And then he goes on to commit to tithing to God as a sign of his trust and devotion. When somebody trusts in God, they can give God of their of what they've been given, even if it's small, because they have that trust in the Lord. So now um, let's finish off this teaching by going through the symbols in the dream. First of all, to start, I believe the meaning of the dream overall is that the Lord will multiply Jacob, that the Lord is his God and he will keep his promises to Jacob because he he is he belongs to him. In this dream the Lord says he will multiply him and bless him with land and offspring and that he will keep his promises. He comes to Jacob as the promise keeper in this dream and he says the Lord's presence my presence will never leave you. I will fulfill my word and I will never leave you. That is a life changing uh, understanding when we understand that God will keep his promises to us and that he will never leave us. That changes the whole trajectory of our life, how we, how we live, what we pursue, what we do with our life, what we do with our time, what we do with our money, what we do with our family. When we know that the Lord is the promise keeper and the one that never leaves us, it's a game changer. And that, that is what I believe the Lord, the meaning of this dream. The ladder, let's go, th go through some of the smaller pieces. The ladder in the dream symbolizes a connection between what is above and what is below. And in this case, heaven to earth. The ladder symbolized that when I, because I am with you, there is now a connection, an open heaven, if you will, above you of what is in heaven, I will bring down to earth for you. The promises, the provision, the pro everything that is in heaven is accessible to you and I will bring it down to you. I will have it sent down to you. Um, and so a ladder here symbolizes a connection between heaven and earth, a connection between God and Jacob, and a place to connect. Um, a, a ladder can symbolize 
a place or an opportunity to connect to God. And so that's what the ladder symbolizes in the dream. Some even would say the ladder symbolizes a portal, a heavenly portal. Next, the angels in the dream symbolize heavenly assistance. The Lord was promising Jacob, I will personally send my hosts, my angels to assist you with whatever you need to fulfill this promise. And so when there is a presence of angels in the dream, there is an encouragement to the, the receiver that no matter how impossible the situation or this promise is, if God sends his angels to assist me, it's not going to be up to me to make it happen. He's the one that's going to make a way and he's going to use his angels to make it happen. Uh, and we see the ascending and the descending, and that symbolizes the up and down, bringing of provision from God down to earth over and over. It's not just one time they went up and went down. There was a, a flow of ascending and descending, meaning this uh, blessing over you, this promise of having this uh, open heaven, this constant connection between heaven and earth is available, but it's all, it's going to happen consistently. It's not just a one-time thing. And that's amazing. Um, and, and when we look at this, we see that Jesus Christ is the ladder between the Lord and through uh, into us. And now that he came and died and rose again, we have an open heaven. We have, we are able to receive the blessings of heaven and the inheritance of heaven down while we live on earth. It's not just pre pre prepared for us in heaven, although it is, it is available to us in a constant flow as, as we live under the cross and we have received the cross of Christ. We now have that open access to the blessings of heaven. Amen. And then the dust. So we see that man, Adam was formed of the dust of the earth. So dust can symbolize mankind or man can also symbolize the brevity of life because man is but dust and what we are made of. But in this case, Dust symbolizes man, but it symbolizes the immeasurable amount of people that would come from Jacob's line. And God wanted to, just like he had told Abraham, he wanted to tell Jacob, this, the amount of people that are going to come from your line and, and, and from your seed is immeasurable as much as the dust on the earth is, you can't count it. And then we have the gate. At the end of the dream, uh, Jacob says that this is a gate. Uh, for the for the Lord to come. That's why he set up the memorial. And a gate in a dream is going to symbolize an entry point. And in Jacob's case, it's a good entry point. It's an entry point for the presence of God, the provision, provision of God, the blessing of God. But if a gate can also be an entry point that the Lord is saying, I need you to shut that gate. I don't want that gate open because what is coming in and out of that gate is not good. So a gate is a place, an entry point or a place of meeting, a place of contact that can either be good or bad. And then we have the stone, the stone that he laid his head upon that also he used to be a stone of remembrance before he left that place is a stone symbolizes here remembrance to remember the goodness of God. And we see the Israelites doing this throughout their journey where they would set up a stone a memorial, a place of remembrance, so they wouldn't forget what God had done for them. And so that's so important that we know that um, how important it is for us to remember what the Lord has done and to give testimony. That stone also stood as a testimony of what God had promised. So anytime I believe that Jacob saw a stone or a large stone or a memorial, he would, he would remember that situation, that dream and that encounter with the Lord and say, I remember what you said. I remember what you promised. Last, the last symbol that we're going to go over is the pillar. And a pillar is what, what Jacob made with the stone. He set it up as a pillar. And a pillar is something that points us to God's goodness. A pillar is something that is pointing upward. It's used to support or give strength. And so the pillar in this, in this uh, encounter symbolizes something that points Jacob to God's goodness and it will it will act as something that strengthens him just like a pillar would strengthen um, give strength to a building or a structure the pillar um, here for Jacob is going to strengthen him when he faces you know we if we if you study his life he's about to be deceived and tricked by his own uncle into marrying the wrong 
the wrong sister, right? He was he was working to marry this this woman that he loved and he was tricked on his wedding night into marrying the wrong sister. So he has to work another seven years to get the woman that he loved. And so he's gonna need some strengthening. He's gonna need some endurance. And we know that this is the man, Jacob, who's who God changes his name to Israel. And he's the one who's going to lose his wife, Rachel, in childbirth. He's going to lose his son, Joseph, and not see him for 12 years. Um, and he's going to almost lose his son, Benjamin. He's, he's going to face a lot of hardship. So I believe that the Lord wanted him to know and have this encounter, this dream, to know that the Lord was going to be with him through it all, that he would never leave him, and that he would fulfill his promise and his purpose no matter what he saw. So I pray that this encourages you and blesses you. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts and comment in the comment section. Um, so I'll see you at the next dream session.